We're back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. Let's get to our first major conversation this morning. We have a guest already on standby. And the Coalition of Aviation Workers Unions have threatened to proceed on uh, an industrial action in the next 14 days if the anti-labor, what they call anti-labor clauses in the new aviation uh, uh, law currently awaiting the assent of the new aviation uh, uh, bill currently awaiting the assent of the president. Uh, is not removed. The coalition is made up of uh, National Union of Air Transport Employees, Air Transport Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers, uh, Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, and the Mar Amalgamated Unions of Public Corporations, as well as the Civil Service Technical and Recreational Service Employees. Now, specifically, the unions uh, decried what they termed a, uh, quote, a subtle attempt to restrain and obliterate unionism in the aviation sector, end of quote. They also alleged that unknown persons uh, in the sector inserted, inserted rather repressive clauses into the new bills governing affairs of the NCW, that's the uh, Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, and, uh, and four other aviation agencies. Uh, they are demanding that the leadership of both the Senate and House of Assembly Committees on Aviation withdraw the bills and expunge the controversial clauses before uh, the approval of these clauses by uh, Mr. President. I'm glad to say joining us uh, to discuss this latest development in Nigeria's aviation sector is uh, Assistant Secretary General of Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative, uh, Olumide Ohunayo. Um, glad to have you, Olumide. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Fantastic. Um, uh, do you agree with the 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 uh, we can call them amalgamated um, unions uh, of in the aviation sector that uh, the current aviation bill, as it is been presented to Mr. President, um, must be changed? Well, uh, not in totality, uh, uh, because uh, the group was keeps changing. Uh, the first time uh, they, they said it was uh, inserted into the act, then later I heard that now, now it's now the fan act. Uh, but the, the the truth is that that the, the, the that that that, uh, that is section that is generating this fury was in the Civil Aviation Act in 2020, uh, 2006. That was just uh, reenacted and passed by the uh, by, by the um, uh, Mr. President. You know, I signed, signed sorry, by Mr. President. It was there. That that has always been in the bill. So just wondering why uh, all of a sudden now it's turning to an issue for the union. All right, uh, but um, some have said, you know what, this this is um, uh, their chance to to uh, uh, to get a change. If they didn't have that before. Uh, this is their chance to get a change. And, of course, uh, the fact that um, we look at uh, the, the, the labor laws in the country, uh, anything that should affect unionism in any part of the, uh, you know, any institution in the country, not just the public sector, but the private sector, should be discouraged, you know. Uh, so what do you say to this? If it's something that was there as far back as 2006 and simply repeated in a new law, um, does it mean that they should not stand up and fight it? Shouldn't we be looking at the the uh, the heart of the matter, whether this insertion or this provision rather helps things? That's 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 the little part I gave in, the, in my opening statement that uh, how the, that, that I was supported a bit that well they, they need to look at it and have it adjusted. But you see the the truth here is that all the world that 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 uh, particular uh, clause has been in the. Um, Act, they've always gone on strike or, uh, without uh, anybody uh, uh, hold, holding on to that uh, or obeying that clause. So probably they're looking at the future whereby the rule of, rule of law will be will take, take, take this effect and it might probably be used to hold them down. But let me let me just have, let us look at it. That 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 clause that's on um, uh, uh, Article sixty seven of the General Service Section of the Civil Aviation Act, and it says the minister may by regulations prohibit all or such class or classes of workers. Officers and other employees of persons, whether corporate or natural, en engaged in a provision of the services specified in Section 1 of, of this section from taking part in a strike or other industrial action. Now, what are the services? They are all services which facilitate and maintain the smooth, orderly, and safe takeoff, 
light flight, take off flight, and handling of aircraft, and the disembarkation and the evacuation of passengers and cargo, respectively, in all aerodromes in Nigeria are hereby designated as essential services. Now, this this clause is from uh, actions within the aerodrome area. Aerodrome area here is about is uh, we are talking about the uh, the runway area, the tax we are aircraft land with critical um, uh, stellar safety area of the, of the aviation industry. Well, so um, on whose part? I mean, at, at the end of the day now, you have um, this workers who are saying we're embarking on, on a strike action. And on the other hand, it's because of a certain reason which the government is involved. In. And who would you say is actually right or wrong here? Well, look, like uh, like the like your colleague there said, um, if this was in the in the in the act before, and you now want it removed or expunged, uh, or expunged, then you have to go through uh, negotiation, mix awareness about it, and then see how it can be expunged. But to say it was just um, smuggled in, that that is not a fact. So that's why I've, I've read the two thousand and six act. That was that, that was that was repelled and then uh, reintroduced now and signed by Mr. President and it's still in the in the new act. Now under this act, now what that act says is that it's those on the aerodrome side. But look at that aerodrome side. The, the air traffic controllers are on that side and on uh, as of two days ago they still went on strike in Kano uh, because of the, uh, the because of the issue they have with the fund authorities over power supply to the to the to the building of the air traffic controllers to the to the residential quarters that was cut off by fan. The the, the ATC men there in Kano went on strike and grounded all flights in Kano, which also breached this cause because that's an aerodrome that's that, that's that's an aerodrome area. You know, so the law has always been there. The labor labor have always done what they want to do. So I, I didn't understand why we're having uh, this fury this time around. Okay, uh, they have protested. So passengers miss their flight because they cause some uh, traffic at, at, the, at the airports. Passengers miss their flight. They have written to the minister, written to the, to the Senate Committee on Aviation, the House Committee on Aviation, and uh, every other person they've copied uh, with respect to their opposition to that clause that issue expunged. So, and they, they, we, they have within 10, they've given about 10, for, we have about 12, 10 days left now after the, uh, to have, um, after the protest, because it was 14 days after the protest. So we have about 12 days left for to see what can be done, how. Uh, the, the, all parties can come together and agree on, on it. But for me, I, I feel uh, if it was there all the while and you still do your thing, big people will, and the effect of your respect is being felt, why bother this time around? That's, that's, what, that's what I say. All right. So looking at the heart of the matter, I mean, you are an aviation industry expert. Uh, uh, if you look at the, you know, ex legal experts have said that you look at the common law in Nigeria, um, uh, you know, workers are entitled to go on strike or industrial action, um, provided they give sufficient notice. In this case, the aviation unions are saying this law is going to prevent us from, you know, embarking on a strike, from picketing, from uh, shutdown, from lockdown. Um, but if you look at, apart from the Nigerian laws, you look at the Trade Disputes Act, or the Trade Union Act, rather, uh, and even the trade disputes uh, uh, provisions, employees have the constitutional right to embark on industrial action, um, you know, so this is the, the right that cannot be denied them. We also look at international law. I mean, you look at international law, international best practices. Workers are um, a right to strike is protected or governed by international legal instruments. You have the conventions of the United Nations, the international labor organizations, as well as provisions by bodies, you know, like the African Union. Um, so, so the, these are guarantees, international guarantees. Uh, let's look at the international practice across the aviation sector around the world. Don't we have aviation sectors in other countries, including the advanced or more advanced countries, going on strike or industrial action? Well, the, well I agree with you. Uh, we have uh, industrial action in all aspects of the industry. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, the closest um, uh, delving at right now is on the aerodrome side. That's, um, which, 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 is, which has to do with safety. They're saying that uh, it should not uh, affect the uh, uh, landing, takeoff, uh, disembarkation of passengers and the boarding of passengers on the aerodrome side. But that we can, we can do all you need to do at the, at the airport, within the airport terminal, 
in around the airport, in your offices, but not on the aerodrome, aerodrome side. That, that, that's where the, the, the standard safety is not um, being, uh, being, being tampered with or risked. So, uh, like, like, this law has always been there. And the unions have always gone on strike and had uh, uh, their way and, uh, and uh, whatever uh, uh, decision they wanted the government of, uh, the, or agencies to act upon was dealt with based on them using that instrument, that strike. So I don't think that, that power has been taken away. Again, the air traffic controllers, uh, the one on the aerodrome side, who should, uh, uh, to me, should be the one that should have uh, kicked against uh, uh, that uh, clause. But the, the, uh, the air traffic controllers still... Uh, go ahead with their strike. Uh, but this time around, what they do is that they, they serve the, the notice to airmen and that they, they will be to proceed on strike so that uh, airlines and uh, operators can prepare for the day that they, they're supposed to proceed. Uh, the one that happened in Kano was spontaneous. They, they did not uh, give any notice. They, they just stopped. Uh, op they just did operate the, um, uh, allow any flight to take off. They didn't give any, uh, any startup or uh, allow any uh, aircraft to land. So that happened in Kano on Monday. But like I said, it's the aerodrome side, and then I think uh, for me, a person I, see, I don't see anything wrong with this. Since time from time immemorial, we know that unions have always used their rights and used it effectively to okay. get what they want. Yeah, but, but, the yeah, but it, it seems like there is a there's a there's a there's a bid here to you know have reason um, at play. You you know you've yes. talked about what happened in Kano. If some some airline is on the is on the way from Dubai to Kano, and then maybe it, it's supposed to land at uh, 12 p.m. or at uh, 1 p.m. And then at 12.55, the you know, say, oh, we are going on strike. Then, of course, the airline safety and uh, aircraft safety will be compromised. Um, so, yeah. so shouldn't we, rather than say you cannot embark on such industrial action if you are in the aerodrome axis of the airport, you know, like you've said, uh, shouldn't we say we should conform to the laws of the land, you know, which, I mean, the, the Trade Dispute Act is quite touchy, if I must be, uh, be be honest, but shouldn't we say that okay? Let's conform to the best practices. Looking at, at the the laws across board, give us ample um, uh, inf information. Let us know so so and so days ahead. Let's sit around the table and agree that if you're going to go on the strike, you're going to tell us that you can go at this time. Why I'm asking this is because I asked again, sir. Across the world, what are the international best practices? Do you know workers in other parts of the country who work in the aerodrome area? Do they go on strike or not? I, have to see, I don't know. Do they go on strike or not? Because we can look at what the other countries are doing to to learn from. And uh, 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 the aviation industry around the world, uh, strikes are, are legit and allowed both uh, on the air side and on the uh, on the uh, on the terminal side of the of the airport. So um, unions have have a way to uh, of going on strike, and they give notices ahead. For, the, for those strikes to take place, for those in the critical areas, we've seen air traffic controllers in other countries refuse to to uh, work, and the the air, air force personnel are brought into marshal some flights, and the uh, flights are, commercial flights are, are, are reduced or, or stopped abruptly, only for emergency flights to to, uh, to be allowed to land, uh, just to take care of the situation while they negotiate with air traffic controllers. So uh, there's all, uh, labor's all uh, the labor labor unions around the world have always gone on strike, whether they have whether they work on the aerodrome side or the air side. It's not that. Uh, and necessary arrangements and information that are available to the authorities and alternate plans are made. Okay, but, um, you know, let's come back and also look at some other issues, apart from, you know, union issues and the class, you know, in the bill that uh, uh, you have workers of the aviation sector protesting. Let's look at the issue of, you know, the aviation fuel and the fact that, you know, uh, the prices of flight base, I mean, domestic flight, have been on the high on the other side. And at some point, you know, they have also threatened to hold work. Uh, we also hear the minister saying that it, it is within, you know, out of control for uh, the sector, uh, w whatever crisis they are faced with, especially with the aviation field, it is out of their control and there's nothing that can be done. Now, um, what are your thoughts on this? The tickets are actually on the high. I mean, tickets have actually gone up uh, to as much as 50,000 naira and above. And, uh, you know, in some cases you have uh, these sectors saying, airlines saying they're not going to fly. It's a lot going on, especially for the domestic flights. I'd like you to share your thoughts on it. Well, uh, what are my thoughts? Uh, I think um, uh, I'm also as confused as uh, 
the rest of, uh, uh, of, the, of the industry, why we would have to say the option of solving up uh, the, the petroleum crisis is, uh, uh, is based on a long time um, uh, plan. Uh, like the minister said, the, the minister got us all confused there. Uh, he's looking at the option of um, Dan Kote refinery uh, on its completion, uh, that that would help. And then when the government finished turning around the ever epileptic uh, protocol and uh, Cardinal refinery, for us, that's too long. Uh, there's no certainty in, uh, in, in those two options. Uh, but the certainty we have right now that I, that, as a opinion, can help with uh, help us with the aviation price, um, uh, uh, price and, and, and scarcity at times is to look at the modu modular refineries that are on ground in Nigeria. We have about two or three of them who have been waiting for over a year to be allocated crude oil. For God's sake, over a year. You know, they, they are not allocated, but they're, they're, they're sending abroad. Now, if this modern refineries, happily for them, or luckily for them, aviation fuel is deregulated. This uh, is regulated. This is deregulated. Um, Closing is regulated. So, the, so there's no subsidy to be paid. So it's what is it's, it's the, the, the sell the, after they are cost that they determine the price. They will sell to to, to airlines. So it, it's good to be just allow those modern refineries to start off with the, the aviation fuel, and there are about two or three of them. Again, in the interim, because of the high cost of um, of the oil prices in the international market caused by the war in Ukraine and uh, between Ukraine and Russia, I think the landing costs at the ports and the taxes at the airport should, for the moment, before for at this period, be waived, so we can so the price can drop. We started the year with 119 per liter, and today it's about 900. It's about 900. Which is almost an that 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 is falling to the dollar. So if if the aviation fuel has gone about sevenfold of its price in January, and the ticket has just moved from about uh, two, uh, twenty-five thousand in January to about one hundred and fifty thousand, which is about five times uh, the, the price in um, uh, in January, then you, you will see that the airlines have tried have tried not to move to match the level of a fuel, fuel, fuel price. Increase, uh, the, um, much the, the increase in fuel price. So that's the situation we're in in the industry. Uh, the, 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 fuel, the fuel price is killing. Uh, the airlines are not getting strong. We have, we have lost two airlines. Two airlines are down now. Aero and Dana. And we just hope we don't add more to it. Rather, we need to expand that capacity. And in expanding that capacity, the condition of the condition of uh, operations, the condition of the cost, the cost of uh, operations must be favorable to expand capacity All right. and to improve operations from the airlines. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so, well, uh, the, what we have on ground is that the unions have given this 14-day ultimatum, and they're saying that um, the 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 clause in the in the electoral act, uh, sorry, the aviation aviation act. Uh, which is yes. yeah, yes. yeah, it, it, it goes against uh, all international conventions and laws and practices in the aviation sector. So, 14 days hence, uh, we might see a total shutdown of the aviation sector in Nigeria. I mean, probably we're almost at a shutdown because uh, we hear the airports are scanty uh, these days. But of course, we're getting towards the end of the year where people will be traveling around and traveling for their holidays. Uh, we expect to see, I'm sure you'd agree, increased uh, activity at the, uh, at the airports. Let's see what happens. Uh, uh, they have also said that the, the, the issue of essential services was not discussed at any time when the six bills in consideration were discussed at the National Assembly level. So they think that this was smuggled in, um, you know, behind Can I, every, can I clarify every, that? Yeah. I can, I, I can, I, well, I, can I, I only appeal to the unions to please uh, handle with care. They start with the communication. They should see how they can improve that communication before we get to the before they get to that uh, using that last stick, which is strike. Uh, and I, hopefully, I, I don't think we'll get there. But you see, um, when, when you say it was small wooded, no, they said. It, 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 oh, yes, when, when they say it was small wooded, it was in the last act, and the, the act was reproduced. To, and updated. So at that point, we're all at the assembly. I was there. They were there. At that point, they would have they would have uh, objected to, to the, that clause being in the 2006. I said they should not put it back in the, in the, in the new okay. order. Appended by, the, by Mr. President. And that has been appended. That's an right. act. But now they're saying they're looking at the one with the, with fan, the fan act that they, they, they have, that it wasn't there before and it has not been smuggled in in order to stop them from uh, protesting and get the concession. I think that's okay. what, that is the key issue now. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Ohona, we have to go. Um, uh, I mean, I'm glad you've, you've clarified this since you were there. And we'll see what happens. Uh, but the aviation sector is a very critical. I'm sure you, you already know, uh, know this to the Nigerian economy. And it's uh, in, in the state of um, 
of crisis right now. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to seeing thank you again. Thank you for having me. Yes, 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 yes. Secretary General of Aviation Sector, or Safety, rather, Roundtable Initiative. We have our next conversation up next, of course, uh, a guest standing by. I'll be right back after this to continue on The Breakfast. <laughs>